Live and Immortality TV. The baptism of fire with the bond servant of Christ, John Enosike. <laughs> something about the mansions something about rams let's talk about creatures let's talk about the mansions rams every creature of god every creation is either a living being or a living habitation process that you look at the earth heaven earth and the hosts of them earth this earthly realm and the heavenly realms the bible didn't reuse heaven as a singular word the Bible used heaven as a plural word. God created the heavens. So the Bible speaks of the heaven, the places. The first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heavens. So every creature, be it invisible or visible, is either a living being or a living habitation. The earth is living, but its position, responsibility, is to be a habitation. The earth is a habitation, but the earth is a living habitation. Didn't you see how the earth helped the woman to swallow up the flood in Revelation? The earth helped the woman. Have you not found the Bible says, Oh, earth, 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 write this man childless, a man that shall never prosper in his lifetime. So God commanded the earth. So the earth is not just an, an inanimate object. The earth is a living habitation. So every living creature falls under a certain dimension. Some creatures are invisible and some creatures are visible. Whether they be thrones, dominions, authorities, power, rulers, principalities all things we are created for him so some creatures are habitations and some are living entities every living being whether they are visible or invisible Would have to live in a certain dimension. So every habitation is a realm for certain creatures that will host that habitation. Every habitation is a dwelling place of certain creatures. And access to this habitation, access to these realms is glory. Now, in addition to all that you have ever heard about glory, I'm about to bring you into a certain aspect of the glory of God that the church has not yet measured on. Of course, there are diversities to God's glory. But I want to narrow glory to, to 
access to a certain habitation. Humans, creatures of different dimensions, are first to a consciousness. But they need to be given a certain glory depending on what kind of realm that God wants to put them in. So your body is what determines your habitation. If you are a creature of the heavenly dimensions, then he's going to give you a heavenly body. And that heavenly body is glory. I'm going somewhere from here, okay? Remember, we're talking about the realm of fire. The realm of fire. Nobody steps into the fellowship of Yahweh without going through the fire of God that will purify you and burn flesh and blood so that you can be clothed in the fire of God to step into that Yahweh's fellowship. So there is a glory for each realm of realities. There is a particular glory for the realms of realities. First Corinthians chapter 15, 40 to 41. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So when the Bible speaks of glory you realize that glory is access into realms access into the heavenly places is being able to capture the glory of each of those realms in the heavenlies for the one there is one glory of the sun access to the realm of the sun There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star difference from another star in glory. So God began to tell us that there are different realms. You look up to the sun, you think the sun is just a sun. No, the sun is a habitation of certain creatures that you've never seen. The very sun that burns your body and that you cannot stand is a habitation for creatures. But these creatures have the glory of the sun. Each of the stars in the galaxy is a realm for creatures under Yahweh. But they have the body for those dimensions. And they live in that dimension. God has other civilizations beyond this earthly civilizations. The creator has created a lot. But there is one creature you are looking at me right now. That God has given the ability to assess the heavenly places. And the Bible says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now that means we have access to the heavenly places. Now get to Verse number 44 of First Corinthians chapter 15. Quickly. Everybody read on the screen. Word of God. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. Now, if I am blessed with a certain blessing... 
that is in the heavenly places, then I would need a spiritual body blessed with spiritual blessings established in the heavenly places. So I need to put on a spiritual body in order to assess the spiritual realms. That you, you have the terrestrial body and celestial body. Now the problem is, Paul said, I don't know whether I was in the body or in the spirit. That means Paul knew, could remember that that was in the dream. Because he would have literally said like Peter said, I had a dream. When Paul had a dream, he says, he said, I had a dream. When he, he dreamed of, of the angel that came to him in the dream and said, this ship will wreck. He was specific when he had dreams. But when he had an outer body experience, he spoke like it. He says, I'm not sure whether in the body or in the spirit, not in the dream, but such a man was caught up. When John the Beloved was cast into the island of Patmos, he wasn't sleeping. The Lord gave him access to the glory of the heavenlies. So I can interchange glory with body. So if I can assess a certain glory of a certain dimension, then I can elevate into that dimensions. So glory is the door to the reigns of God. Glory is the door to the heavenly places. Now say it loud and clear, I am blessed. I didn't hear like you are hearing me. I say, I am blessed. I am blessed to legally, to legitimately access the realms of heaven. So let us now establish that fact. He didn't say, and thou shalt be blessed to come into the heavenly places when thou shalt die. Have you not heard when Paul declared and said, For ye are come unto Mount Zion. Ye are come. The city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. For you are come. Not after life experience. Don't let them deceive you with this illusion and falsehood of, of afterlife, afterlife, after no, 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 no. Jesus came to you in life. He brought eternal life to you in life. And he wants you to lay hold of it in life. If you can behold the glory of God, you will start ascending into the dimension of that particular glory that you have beheld. We don't behold the glory to feel some kind of good bombs. Sir, so after you vibrate, make sure you enter. We must be intentional. We must be intelligent enough. We must be spiritually intelligent enough to discern what the glory is for. When the glory descends in a service like this, it is to enter. Oh, if you don't know the purpose of a thing, abuse is inevitable, said by Maris Moron. Give a child a microphone. He will start playing with it. Give it to someone who understands what it is. He uses it for a purpose. When the glory shows.
rose up. It is the wide wind that took the physical body, but the physical body, the soul, and the spirit of Elijah into the heavenly places. But he couldn't return because he didn't have the capacity. But we in Christ have the capacity of Christ in us. So we can traffic the heavenly to earth. We can go to dimensions. You can go beneath the earth. Ah! Masahilo! Somebody say fire! Woo! So whenever you behold the glory, just know it is an access. Glory is an access. If you want to go deeper, you say, Father, what kind of glory has come? Which heavenly place is this one taking me to? Said, but we are. Ah, I love that standing ovation. Come on, I love it. Put it on, son. Put it on, us. But we all, with an open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are what? Change into the same image from glory to glory. By the transportation of the Spirit of God. So when we gather like this, we are all beholding, we are all beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord. So what are we beholding? The glory. Uh, when we, uh, we, we behold, when the glory comes, we take another form. We, we are changed. Many we, 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 uh, we put off this physical tabernacle and put on the glory of that heavenly dimension. And then by the Holy Ghost, we are transported into the heavenly places where the treasures and the volumes of the eternal purposes of God is established.